Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you this case of a very dense cataract and performing double chop, cross chop, and mechanical fracturing techniques. This lens is so dense that when I did chop it, it actually clogged the fingertip. This has happened to me on multiple occasions when I was on mission trips doing cataract surgery on really dense cataracts. And so you can see that this tip does get clogged. I have to stop and flush out the tip. You're going to also see sub-incisionally have an anterior capsule tear, and you can see how this happened and how I can avoid it for the future. So I'm using a Q-tip to center the eye and then a corneal marker to help me center and size the rexus. I'm turning the eye with a cotton tip. In this case, I have a metal blade for my paracentesis incision. First on the right side and then the left side, this is a left eye. You want to make sure you're flat to the iris plane to get a nice corneal shelf, which will allow me to achieve a self-sealing corneal incision. I'm injecting some intracameral lidocaine and then intracameral air. And I'm injecting some tripan blue. The tripan blue is going to be used to paint the anterior capsule surface. Again, I don't want to be really aggressive. I just drip it and then using the cannula, almost like a paint roller, I'm just sweeping on the surface of the anterior capsule. Now I'm injecting some dispersive viscoelastic to evacuate the air as well as the tripan blue. And then this is a triplanar corneal incision. Using the cannula, I'm holding the eye steady. I make a vertical groove, place the blade into the deep part of the groove, tunnel through the cornea, and then use a cannula to turn the eye and then enter. This is my puncture style capsule orexis. I'm going to puncture the center. You can see there's a little bit of movement of the bag. So this alerts me that there could be some zonular weaknesses, which is really not surprising in these cataracts. I usually anticipate the weak zonules in these very dense lenses. And so routinely, I like to put in a three piece lens when I'm dealing with these very dense lenses. So I'm going around circumferentially, grabbing and re-grabbing. This will be the capsular fornix hydrodissection technique. Place the cannula out to the equator contraincisionally, point the tip down, get a nice fluid wave, decompress on the left side, you can see the shininess of the lens, which does tell you it's a pretty dense lens, leathery lens. Turn the tip to the right side and it spins nicely. I'm irrigating the surface of the eye, making sure my sleeve is in the proper position. I lift the incision with the chopper, go in with irrigation off to minimize decimase trauma. You can see how much I've exposed the tip with this very dense lens. Place the chopper out to the equator, Point the tip vertically sub-incisionally, bringing both instruments together very slowly. You can see the whitening of the lens, and I crush the lens completely in half. Again, I'm just using this with no vacuum or ultrasonic energy. So you can see I was able to propagate the chop all the way through. I place the chopper out to the contralateral equator, pulling it centrally toward the fingertip, and I crush the right hemineucleus. So the first was a double chop, and this is a cross chop. All of these maneuvers are done without any ultrasonic energy or vacuum. This is purely using mechanical fracturing forces. If you pay attention, when I did the double chop, I caused a little bit of a piece of the capsule subincisionally get was actually removed. There's a semicircular defect in the subincisional capsule. And so I was very lucky that I actually caused an anterior capsule tear, but it ended up being a semicircular tear. So very carefully, I, I use a vacuum to pull the piece up and then use a chopper to get around it. And then I'm sandwiching the lens pieces. You can see how dense the lens is. So I'm going to be very careful about using mechanical fracturing forces, crushing the lens pieces into smaller pieces before I try to emulsify the lens pieces. So I grab that one piece, begin to sandwich the lens pieces, and then using ultrasonic energy and vacuum. 
place a chopper around the lens piece again, sandwiching the lens piece between the chopper and the fingertip, and severing these posterior adhesions. So I'm going after the second quadrant now, place the chopper around the lens piece, trying to place that fingertip a little bit deeper, crushing and dividing that second quadrant. So I'm just turning that fragment around, making sure it's completely free, and then place the chopper around the lens piece and dividing that fragment. Crushing the lens piece between the chopper and the faker tip again, and then emulsifying the lens piece. Again, I'm sandwiching the lens piece again between the chopper and the faker tip, and then emulsifying the lens piece. So I turned the second heminucleus in front of me, and then now I'm attacking that one remaining fragment from the first heminucleus. Again, sandwiching the lens pieces and crushing them into smaller pieces, and then emulsifying the lens pieces. At this point, I realize that something's not right. I'm using ultrasonic energy, but it's not really doing anything. So I go out, I push the viscoelastic in the eye, and then flush the tip. The technician is able to flush the tip, and now I'm getting better evacuation of the pieces. So again, the, the tip was clogged, and which was making it a lot less efficient, and the pieces weren't moving. Even though there was vacuum, when I press, the ultrasonic energy wasn't really uh, doing anything here. So I place the chopper around the second heminucleus now, placing the fake tip deep in the bag, and then I'm dividing the lens in half very carefully and slowly, making sure I'm separating even to the deep adhesions there. So again, I don't prefer to lollipop the lens using ultrasonic energy to impale the lens piece. I prefer to use mechanical fracturing forces to crush and divide the lens pieces rather than using ultrasonic energy. So once I get the lens separated, I'm gonna use a little bit of vacuum to hold the lens piece and then crush the lens piece between the chopper and the finger tip. And then keep using crushing forces and mechanical fracturing forces to make the pieces smaller and emulsify the lens pieces with high vacuum and ultrasonic energy. As you can see, the bag does not have much epinuclear protection. And so with these really dense lenses, you have to be really careful about protecting the posterior capsule. So I emulsified those last pieces of the third quadrant. I placed a chopper around the fourth quadrant, pull it centrally towards the fingertip. And I divided that fourth quadrant very carefully using mechanical fracturing forces. Do the same thing, taking the chopper around the lens piece and crushing it between the chopper and the fake tip. Using a little vacuum to position the lens piece and then using mechanical fracturing forces. Again, high vacuum, holding the lens piece in place and then crushing the lens piece between the chopper and the fake tip and emulsifying the lens pieces. So like I said, um, this is a very dense lens, no epinuclear protection. Very important that you protect the bag in these situations. You're going to be very careful with the vacuum. So again, I'm positioning the lens piece on the tip, crushing it between the chopper and the fake tip, emulsifying the lens piece, making sure that the chopper is deep to protect the posterior capsule here. As I can see here, as I'm using the FACO, it's nothing's really happening. The, the pieces are not coming to the tip. So I think it's clogged again. So I take the chopper out and I'm injecting some viscoelastic into the eye. 
I'm using the viscoelastic to visco mobilize that fragment as well as push the posterior capsule back. I'm using the cannula to tease up the pieces and pushing more viscoelastic to push back the posterior capsule. So I'm using the viscoelastic cannula to do two things, to position the lens where it's more easily accessible to the phaco tip, as well as pushing back the posterior capsule with viscoelastic. So I'll go back in with the chopper and the phaco tip. I have the phaco tip right up against the lens material, and then I start evacuating the lens pieces there. Once I have this final piece, I decide to just sandwich it first. And then very gingerly, I'm using high vacuum as well as some bursts of ultrasonic energy to remove those pieces, making sure that the chopper is deep to protect the posterior capsule again. So I had to go out again because the tip was clogged one more time. I had that one small fragment. So I had to go out and then flush the tip again. And then I was able to emulsify that lens piece. So I take the chopper out, go in with the BSS cannula, take the fake tip out, and then go in with the ionic hand piece. So the tip has been clogged three times now in this very dense lens. And again, it could be because I don't really go with the pedal to metal FACO technique. Maybe that would cause it to clear the tip a little bit easier since I have a lot of foot pedal modulation control. And since I really utilize mechanical fracturing techniques, that could really make it a little bit more of a challenge for the machine. However, I really feel very confident this provides me much clearer corneas doing it this way with these dense lenses. Ever since I've employed mechanical fracturing techniques, my corneas have been very, very clear, especially in contrast to previously when I did uh, a lot of horizontal chopping uh, techniques, which again was a really good technique, but again, less predictable corneal clarity. This way, I have a very consistent corneal clarity by utilizing mechanical fracturing. So I inflate the capsular bag with cohesive viscoelastic, and now I sweep underneath the rexus edge. You can see the scalloped edge of the rexus edge subincisionally, and that occurred very early on when I performed the double chop I was a little bit too aggressive and I had the position of my FACO tip subincisional a little bit too peripherally and it caught the edge of the capsule. So now I'm widening the incision with my one millimeter blade. And this is the three-piece acrylic intraocular lens. I have the bevel pointed to the left, which allows the leading haptic to come out planar into the bag. As the optic is delivered, I turn the barrel 90 degrees counterclockwise, and I make sure the trailing haptic is pointed to the right. I use a Maltzman to deliver the trailing haptic into the bag. And you can see, despite that scalloped defect in the subincisional rexus edge, you have really pretty nice overlap of the rexus and the IOL. So I go underneath the optic, tilting it, making sure I remove all the viscoelastic from within the bag. And once everything looks clean, I switch to the visco mode, removing all the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. So this was a very dense lens. I did a double chop, but you could see it did cause a defect in the anterior capsule. So you want to be very careful when you're performing double chop, not to go so far peripheral the phaco tip when you're turning it vertically. And also, it's so, such a dense lens and it caused the phaco tip to get clogged, which I had to stop and then free up 
But this was a very high CDE for me. I don't normally go into double digits, but because I employ the mechanical fracturing techniques, double chop, cross chop, and I sandwich and crush the lens pieces into smaller pieces, this patient had very clear cornea post-op day one and was able to see 20, 30 uncorrected right after surgery. So I hope this was helpful to you, and I thank you for your attention.